Hello, and welcome back to the Web Dev Coach, where my goal is to teach you web development. In this video, we're going to be going over Hacktoberfest. What is Hacktoberfest, and how do you become part of the initiative? Um, first, let's go over exactly what Hacktoberfest is. Um, Hacktoberfest is an initiative created by DigitalOcean, GitHub, and Twilio to encourage open source software development specifically amongst uh, newcomers. Uh, newcomers may not understand exactly how to make pull requests, how to contribute to open source software development, and exactly, uh, and may not understand exactly what uh, contributions to open source software development may look like. To incentivize newcomers to learn uh, how to contribute to open source, um, People who, are, who make five or more pull requests in the month of October 2018 will receive a free shirt. Make five pull requests, get a free shirt. What a deal. Um, and to sign up for Hacktoberfest, um, go to hacktoberfest.digitalocean.com and I'll uh, demonstrate that right now. So here we are at the Hacktoberfest homepage. Um, if you take a look at the website, scroll down. They explain uh, what you need to know, the rules of Hacktoberfest, um, some projects to get you started if you're looking to contribute and not sure what projects to contribute to. Later on in the video, I'll also uh, post two or three of my favorite uh, welcome projects You know that are open to new contributors. Um, Additionally, there's some instructions, some resources to get started with October, Hacktoberfest. What you'll be interested in is the Beginners tab and the Contributors tab, um, as that is basically how you get the free shirt and how you start con con contributing sorry, to open source web development, or open source software development, sorry. And uh, here at the bottom, you'll see uh, meetups happening uh, perhaps in your city. So um, open up, click the button, open up the tab, and you'll uh, see meetups that are going on now. Um, here at the top to sign up, just at the top right, click sign up. It'll bring you over to the uh, registration page, and you use your uh, GitHub account to sign up. Remember, these are pull request requests all through GitHub, so you need to give um, Hacktoberfest permission to track those requests on your GitHub. So here you'll see the uh, sign in page. Use your username and your password to sign right in. Nice. So after you sign in, you'll be forwarded to this thank you page. Uh, the thank you page has, again, a few resources to get you started. Um, but from here on in, your pull requests, the pull requests you make on github.com will be tracked. And um, once you make five, you'll get a success email, etc. You can also track your progress here on the Hacktoberfest page. I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. Uh, but for now, let's get started on actually contributing to an open source project. To start contributing to a project, um, what you'll need to do is look for a project that A, you believe in, or B, has um, is, is friendly to newcomers, and um, read through their contributing.md, uh, where MD stands for a markdown file. This file um, would will describe exactly what you need to do to contribute to that project. Normally, what a contributing.md will describe is that you would fork the repository into your GitHub account, um, clone that onto your local machine, create a new branch or use an existing branch. Um, that'll be described in the contributing.md file. Push that branch up to your repository and create a pull request on GitHub. I know it sounds like a lot, but I'll go over um, all four of these steps uh, live. Well, not live, but here on the video. And then, you know, you can rewind, look at these four steps and see how they sync up. So let's start with um, really finding a project of your choice. To get started with looking through issues on GitHub that um, have the label Hacktoberfest, th this is a very good start. Um, in the search bar in GitHub, you want to type in label colon Hacktoberfest. 
um, Hacktober Fest, and um, where the state of the issue is open. So it's an open issue, nobody has closed it, um, and click enter, and you'll see a bunch of issues that are open and welcoming to uh, new contributors. Um, so take a look through the issues here. On the bottom left, you can see that you can filter by language. So personally, I'm a JavaScript developer. I would click JavaScript. Uh, you would click what is appropriate for you. And um, you'll see issues that are hoping for um, you know open source contributors to help them out. Um, I would suggest not going for um, one. There, there are a lot of fake projects out there that are accepting, you know, adding your name to a list for a pull request. That's kind of, that's, that's pretty cheap uh, way of contributing to open source. What you want to do is have your code and your time actually make a difference in, you know, at least one person's life, if not uh, a lot of people's, where you can contribute to a big library that everybody uses. Personally, I am a big fan of Node School. These are open source workshops that actually, you know, teach you how to write in Node, how to write in JavaScript, etc. You can see here there are a number of tutorials, including JavaScripting, Learn New Node, uh, a tutorial for Git, etc. It's it's a great cause. This is all open school, open source. So um, what I hope to do is to um, contribute to them. You'll see I have them bookmarked. So I'm going to contribute hopefully to Workshopper and specifically to Learn you Node. As I explained before, the first step is to actually fork the repository. Apologies for the fire engine outside, but yes, it's the fork the repository. So open up a project, find the product when you when you find a project, at the top right, um, actually we'll go through there contributing dot MD. Here's a list of maintainers, and here's the actual contributing document. And here um, you'll see rules. These are different for every project um, to contribute to their open source project. Um, basically, what they, uh, the steps they um, want is for you to fork the repository and then uh, clone the copy locally. You'll sometimes see instructions to do that. Um, create a branch and start hacking away. Make your commit, um, write a good commit message, test it, make sure it works, and then push it up to your branch. After you push it up to your branch, we'll click the pull request button and uh, start the pull request process. And I'll guide you through all that. So let's go back to, um, so here, the JavaScripting um, project. We'll click fork. You'll click your name, and it'll start forking the repository. And uh, here you'll see my uh, GitHub name. Please follow if you're interested in what I'm doing on GitHub. Um, so that's the forking process. Now you'll see that I have a JavaScripting project under my GitHub name. It's not mine per se, it's just a fork or a copy of the existing um, project. As such, I want to clone this project. So I'm going to copy the um, project URL, URL. Then I'll open up the terminal um, and I'll clone, do git clone and the URL that you just copied. Press enter, and that'll start the cloning process where you bring the uh, cloned repository onto your local machine. Uh, CD into that project, and open up your favorite code editor uh, to look at that project. All right, so now we have the project opened up on our local uh, machine, on our computer. Uh, you'll see the specifically here the workshop or JavaScripting project. And what I want to do, I actually want to return to the um, main repository where JavaScripting is hosted. This is not my fork. This is the real workshop or JavaScripting. And I want to look through their issues to see what they need help with. Um, here, particularly, there are no Hacktoberfest labels. It looks like this um, specific 
uh, repository may be dying out. There is no spark. There is no um, nobody contributing. And I actually would love to be that spark to get this open source uh, piece of software started again. Anywho, um, there's an issue I was looking at to upgrade to modern JavaScript where um, the solutions and the problems should use uh, let and const instead of just var. So this is something that I believe in that I want to uh, contribute to and uh, help them out with. So I'm going to go back to um, my text editor, get started here. I'm actually going to start by looking for the instances in which they use var and try to replace those um, with const and let or at least uh, get started and then I'll go through the pull request process. Um, for now, I'll be back with the magic of video editing and you'll see um, that I hopefully will have finished a bunch of uh, this um, undertaking. Okay, I finally made my changes here in the repository, you'll see that I changed um, one specific problem where I saw vars. I replaced them with const as um, was wanted. Of course, I didn't do the entire thing. That's a little much. I didn't. I don't have time to right now. And um, open source projects are all about incremental changes. Um, it may seem like a drop in the bucket, but multiple drops in the bucket makes for a big change. So um, I also want to point out that I updated the documentation as well. And um, with open source contributions, it doesn't only need to be code. If you find a place where you can update documentation and make it more understandable for newcomers and for uh, people trying to learn a new framework or piece of software, update the documentation. Maintainers love documentation updates, and it's a great way to get started with understanding um, how to make pull requests and how to contribute to open source software. Anywho, I'll add the, um, let's see, the uh, changes that I made. I'll stage them, and then I'll make the commit. Uh, my commit message will read replace var with const and let in accessing array values. And in my body, I actually want to, let's see, I want to reference the issue in the um, repository, the workshop repository. I want to reference the issue, modern JavaScript. And that way, on the bottom, there will actually be a reference to my commits and my uh, pull request. And um, it'll almost act as a running log to see how um, the progress being made with this issue. So I'm going to actually write contributes to and link to the issue. I'll save that, exit out, and oh, I just realized I actually committed to master, which is not what I wanted to do. I actually wanted to, let's see, make a new branch called ES6. Not EST, called ES6. Okay, and I actually want to push this new branch up to my uh, repository. So now I have a new branch in my JavaScripting repository, in my forked repository. So not the workshopper, this only still only has one branch called master. But if I go back to um, my JavaScripting repository, you'll see after a refresh that there are now two branches. And one of them is the ES6 branch. So if I go to the ES6 branch and click new pull request, you'll see um, it tests for mergeability and I'm able to make the pull request. Um, it's going from my forked repository JavaScripting branch of ES6 into the workshop for JavaScripting um, master branch. Uh, let's create the pull request. And there we go. We can actually go into the issue now. As you'll see, the body of my message it says contributes to uh, 2.12. Same thing here. I can actually go to that issue. And on the bottom, you will see that it references the um, 
pull request that I made. I actually made another pull request prior to this video, which was a failed video attempt, and you could see uh, basically proof of my prior fail. But anyway, this is the pull request that I do want to make, and uh, that's it. I officially made a pull request. Now, if we actually go back to our Hacktoberfest dot digitalocean dot com and we check our progress um, here I'll be checking my personal progress you'll see that I actually am on my second pull request two out of five um, oh well three out of five I guess they are counting my failed pull request that I closed which I feel kind of bad about I'll probably ask them to invalidate that pull request but anyway I um, I made two pull requests, two official pull requests, one that's closed, and I'm uh, a little bit closer to my Hacktoberfest t-shirt. Um, hopefully you're able to do the same. And let's actually go over some projects that are uh, ripe for the picking. These projects here are really good first projects uh, to contribute to. They are welcoming to uh, newcomers. Free Code Camp has actually a bunch of projects on top of their uh, you know, very popular tutorial website. And Operation Code is a uh, website for veterans that is also very beginner friendly. Let's go over those two uh, repositories now. So if we go to, let's go back to GitHub here. If we go to github.com forward slash free code camp, You'll see actually a bunch of repositories that are again welcoming um, contributions. Seer Guide is very popular. Twelve issues need help. The uh, main Free Code Camp project has forty-seven issues that also need help. So feel free to look thro through those issues and see if you can make your first uh, contribution to open source there. Additionally, there is Operation Code forward slash front hyphen end. And this repository here is also uh, pretty beginner friendly, although you do need um, experience with React. You'll see a bunch of their issues are labeled Hacktoberfest. And um, basically what they're trying to do is take their existing project and re-implement it using um, better design, better architecture, etc. So this is a really, really, really good learning experience. Um, I highly suggest it to newcomers. See, they're all excited for um, Hacktoberfest there. And um, wow, now that I read this, o Operation Code is actually offering stickers and um, a t-shirt of their own on top of the Hacktoberfest uh, t-shirt. So Operation Code is a great place to earn, let's say, two t-shirts. One, an Operation Code uh, t-shirt, and two, the Hacktoberfest t-shirt. Um, that's it for now. That's all I have. Hopefully this uh, video gets you started on the Hacktoberfest path. If you like this video, please click the like. I would appreciate tons of subscriptions. So please also click subscribe. I'm new to the YouTube space and trying to get started here. Best of luck at Hacktoberfest, and uh, I'll see you next time.